Chapter 1. The Chateau The three boys trudged through the scorching desert terrain, their eyes fixated on the ground as they searched for traces of water. The only sounds were the crunching of rocks under their shoes, and the occasional rustling of sand carried by the hot wind. Suddenly, the tallest one stopped dead in his tracks, peering intently at a faint trail of moisture on the dry and scorching sand, catching his attention as he followed it with his eyes. In the distance, the sound of a turbine could be heard, a low hum that seemed to permeate the barren landscape. Their metal canisters clanged against their sides as they leapt over rocks and dodged through the bleak wilderness, their faces obscured by goggles and masks that covered their mouths and noses. The trail had finally led them to the colossal insect. There you are, Jax mumbled under his breath, his eyes narrowing as he sized up the hulking critter. The magnificent creature stood before them, its metallic body radiating a stunning brilliance in the warm, golden hue of the setting sun. Each inch of its frame gleamed with a mesmerizing shimmer, casting flickering reflections in every direction. Its insectal origins were overshadowed by its mechanized enhancements. The network of gears, pistons, and intricate contraptions that adorned its body rendered it more akin to a colossal machine than a mere insect. The expansiveness of its stature was enhanced by the support of six massive wings, emphasizing its grandeur. Its strong mechanical legs carried it across the wasteland with effortless grace, sending shockwaves through the ground beneath its weight. It embodied the marriage of natural wonder with that of mechanical mastery. The boys, bewildered by the spectacle, watched from a safe distance as the mammoth miner plunged its long pipes deep into the sandy earth. A thick cloud of dust rose in its wake, enveloping everything in its path. The low rumble of the machine's constant movement resonated through the air, causing a dull, throbbing sensation in their chests. Suddenly, the sound shifted, and a whirring noise filled the air, growing louder and more urgent with every passing moment. The unmistakable rush of water could be heard making its way up the pipes, causing small vent holes to expel plumes of vapor into the sky. Their eyes were fixed on the miner, determined to capture some of the precious liquid it held. Moving closer to it, they scrutinized its exterior and discovered a broken pipe jutting from its side, causing water to trickle out slowly and form the trail they had been tracking. They quietly drew nearer, eyeing the mass of pipes that protruded from its body. They look sturdy enough to climb, Jack said as he turned to one of his companions. He was rewarded with a nod. The others handed their canisters to him to be filled, the clanging of metal against metal ringing out amidst the whirring of the turbines. Without hesitation, Jax turned and began to scale the pipes. His fingers tightened around the smooth metal as he began the ascent, the muscles in his arms and legs flexing with every movement. The sound of rushing water echoed around him as he climbed, the cool spray misting his face. As he drew closer to the top, the noise grew louder, and he could feel the vibrations coursing through the metal beneath his hands and feet. He strained to hear any other sounds, his ears tuned to the slightest hint of danger. Finally, he reached the top of the pipes, and his heart pounded with excitement and apprehension. The noise was deafening now, a roar that filled the air and made his teeth rattle in his skull. He peered to the side of the platform and saw the vast turbines of the miner, spinning with such speed that they were almost a blur. With a final burst of energy, he pushed himself over the edge and landed with a thud on the other side. As he rose to his feet, his eyes widened at the breathtaking view before him. He could see for miles around, the harsh landscape stretching out before him like an endless wasteland. But then, suddenly, the miner began to lift off the ground, the sound of its beating wings growing louder. A small voice shouted from far below, barely audible in his ears. Jax, Jax, come down. The young boy's voice was hoarse from strain. Jax's heart raced with excitement and fear as he clung to the railing the wind fiercely blowing through his dark hair as they ascended higher and higher. The sensation was surreal, as he came to the sudden realization that he was flying on a miner. Jax watched in awe from his perch atop the metal tubes as the miner slowly descended back down to the ground a short distance from his companions, its powerful turbines roaring as it neared the surface. The wind kicked up around Jax as he clung tightly to the tubes for support. The miner's metallic hull gleamed in the dying sunlight its massive form seeming to dwarf everything around it. As the creature touched down on the ground, its intake system stretched down to penetrate the Earth's surface once again, greedily siphoning up the life-giving substance with a low, powerful hum. Jax felt a thrill run through him as he watched the miner in action from above. 
The sound of rushing water filled his ears, and he could feel the steel vibrating beneath his feet as the miner continued to pump water into its tanks. He quickly grabbed his canister and positioned it beneath the stream leaking from the fractured pipe, filling it up with fresh liquid. He could hear the water rushing through the pipe and the gentle splashing as it filled up his container. As the last canister was filled, Jax could hear the faint buzzing sound of the insect's wings getting louder as it slowly began to rise once more. He quickly screwed the cap back onto the canister and slung it over his shoulder, then climbed back down the pipes as fast as he could. He neared the bottom of the pipes and let go, falling the short distance to the ground as the creature lifted away from him. He took a deep breath of relief and turned to look up at the sky. The insect was still hovering there, but it did not seem to notice him. He watched it for a few more seconds until it flew off into the distance. The sound of its turbines and the thud of its legs faded far into the horizon. Jax turned and walked back to his companions, a sense of achievement in his tone as he spoke up. All right, it's getting late. We should head back to the chateau, he said, as he handed the full containers back to them. Good haul. Kai nodded in agreement as they fastened the canisters to their belts and turned back the way they had come.